But I'm not trying to get him off the hook. He's very much on the hook with his traits, regardless of whether it's a part of the disorder or not. There's organic consequences for being wired autistically in a neurotypical world, unfortunately. A lot of it's not fair and a lot of it's not right, but it is, it's, it is what it is. And if you've been watching my videos or others, you already know some of these terms and what they mean. I'm going to just grossly oversimplify them. These are the big four that get in the way of, of this relationship running like you have wanted it to. There's mind blindness. If I have mind blindness, I am not going to understand my NT wife's thinking. I'm not going to understand what she, what's in her mind, why she has certain perspectives and opinions. And if she tells me what her opinion is and why, I'm, I'm going to view it most likely as very illogical and that she's being overly emotional. I cannot peel myself out of my skin and crawl into her skin and look out of her eyeballs and know exactly why she has a certain uh, perspective on things. And since I, which we're calling, that's called empathy. If I can't do that, then when, uh, then I can't even see emphasis on C with mind blindness. I can't see her opinion. So in a mind blind brain, her opinion is invalid. And since I can only see my perspective, therefore I have to be right because in my autistic brain, only one person can be right. And since I can't see your view, I can only see mine, therefore I'm right and you're wrong. Um, with alexithymia, which is emotions blindness, I'm going to be out of touch with my feelings. I'm going to be out of touch with your feelings. And even if you tell me how you feel, it's not going to make any sense to me. I might think, well, what would you feel that way? And if you tell me, well, I feel this way about such and such, and I, you expect me to take how you feel and apply it to some course of action I'm supposed to take? No. Not going to get that one either. Uh, the third one would be executive function deficits. And I'm going to go ahead and put some things in the notes here because there's too many to list right now. I want this to be largely Q&A today. I am going to dump them in here. And I would like for you to, since I get this document to load, and I would like for you to, not necessarily now, uh, but certainly after the group, to peruse through this list that I will have there in a second. And, um, and you will be able to identify, because you know him probably better than anybody else. In fact, I don't think it would be a stretch to say you probably know him better than he knows him. He can't observe, he can't, he doesn't, you have the ability to peel yourself out of your mind and step back, this is you. You have the ability to pull consciousness out from here and view yourself as an objective third party. And do a... a a good self-analysis on why you said something or did something or why you're feeling a particular way, you have that ability. He does not. That's why I say you probably know him better than he knows him. These are the executive functions that I put in the notes. They're not the executive function deficits, but you'll be able to make sense of uh, this. I'll, make, I'll, I'll use a couple examples. If he doesn't understand your uh, nonverbal communication, or your tone of voice, um, or your sarcasm, etc., he would have an abstract thinking deficit. If you have witnessed, which I'm sure you have, some version of a meltdown or shutdown, or freeze, fight, flight, freeze, or false agreement, which he just, yeah, sure, whatever you want, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, I'll do it, just to hurry and get the conversation over with, because he's uh, uh, short-circuiting. So, a meltdown, shutdowns, and all points in between would be emotional control deficit. If he has a problem uh, getting started on a task, a problem multitasking, planning and organizing, if he has a problem shifting focus, in other words, he's hyper-focused on this thing over here, maybe you come along and try to 
divide his attention and get him to attend to something else, you probably got some pushback there. If he seems to forget a lot, working memory deficit. So that's the third one, mind blindness, emotions blindness, executive function deficits, all of which result in the fourth one, which is chronic low-grade anxiety that has been in place if he has ASD level one. It has been in place since childhood. She often says, well, I ask him if he's anxious, and he says, no, he's not. How the hell would he know if he's anxious if he's been operating for the last 35 years? If you're in a dark room for 40 years, somebody comes in, hey, why is it so dark in here? And you, what, what do you mean dark? This is the way it's always been. I don't, I don't have anything to compare or contrast with. So with my, if I go around, and I don't know why people think the way they do, why they feel the way they do, and I have memory problems and focusing problems and organization problems and emotional regulation problems and so on, I've got a lot of anxiety. I've got a lot of unpredictability in my life. Oh, all day long. Um, what am I going to do if I have a lot of just a ton of unpredictability? In my, I'm going to try to create as much predictability as possible for my own sanity. How am I going to do that? I'm going to have a bunch of rules. I'm going to crave structure. I'm going to thrive on routine. I'm going to hate change. And I'm going to really hate surprise change. Um, so... Those are the four big things that have gotten in the way. We could probably throw in sensory sensitivities if we wanted to, but that's really just a symptom of anxiety, which I've already talked about that in most cases. It's the sensory sensitivity that causes the anxiety. So we're back to anxiety again. Those would be the big four that um, look to you, and I'm not faulting you, it's totally understandable why mind blindness would look to you, and, and you have made a bunch of false accusations. I'm not faulting you. Why, why wouldn't you? Because if it looks like a dog, smells like a dog, barks like a dog, by God, you're sure it's a dog. But with mind blindness, you may have downloaded that as my, my opinion is not important to him. He thinks I'm dumb. Um, uh the emotions blindness, you may have downloaded that as he doesn't care about how I feel or that he's so insensitive and uncaring narcissistic. With the executive function deficits, um, I'll use, um, I'm just going to pick one. I'll pick the work and memory executive function deficit. If he has that, oh, by the way, he won't have all of these, but he'll have more than one. Um if he has a working memory deficit, you may download that, and why wouldn't you, as the things that I need him to do or want him to do or us to do are not important to him. He can't even remember them. I have to keep repeating over and over and over and over. Obviously, he doesn't give a shit. And with anxiety, and he does some version of a shutdown, you may download that as he doesn't care about the marriage. I'm not important to him. He just left left me, left the ball in my court, just took off and talked to me for the rest of the day or two or three days. But one of the goals of this group would be, and I know it's the behavior still hurt. I'm not saying, well, you need to just not be upset about it. No, no, no. But I would like you to at least begin the process of not taking some of these traits personally. So we already know the what part, what happened. I could probably describe what's happened, even though I've never talked to you before. But I want to, for on my end, I want to focus more on why it happened so that it will make more sense to you. Um, and if you can begin to take some of these things less personally, it might take some of the sting out of behaviors that you may have downloaded as he's selfish, uncaring, insensitive, narcissistic, sociopathic, etc. cetera. 